When you start putting God's word in your prayers to God, your prayers are going to go to a whole new level because you are not informing God based on your viewpoint. You are agreeing with God based on what God has already said. You're not telling God what needs to happen based on your limited understanding of the situation. You're agreeing with what God has already said is going to happen and you're aligning with him. What is up everybody? This is Pastor Jacob with another Biblical First Responder video. And as always, this is Witness Wednesday. Now I need you to do all of those wonderful things that helps this channel to grow. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Now today we want to talk about something that seems to have set the internet ablaze. We're talking about praying the word. Now, before we get anything misconstrued, praying the word is not a new concept. Um, from what I understand, there has been a lot of talk about praying the word lately in prayer Bibles. Now, prayer Bibles, that's not my thing. You can ask my wife. I'm not into marking up my Bible, even though godly men have suggested it to me. And I understand where they're coming from. Mark it up so that way when someone gets this Bible, when this Bible is passed down, then they'll know, hey, these verses mean this or that or focus on this. And, and that I understand. I just never have been one to mark up a Bible. I've always been one. You might give me a Bible today and you might see it 30 years later and it be in just as good a condition as when you gave it to me. Not because I do not use it, but because I try my best to take care of it and I do not tend to mark it up. Um, now, I believe if you want to look at my stuff, read the books I've written, um, find my notes, wherever you may find them, um, whatever. I have written a bunch of stuff. Look back at my um, social media accounts and all of these things where I've written extensively on what I believe and what I am passionate about. With that being said, if that's your thing, do it. God bless you. Enjoy it. Whatever brings you closer to God, do it. We're talking about praying the word. Praying the word is nothing new. Praying the word isn't a concept that came up with the Sister Rita Club or any other club or any other channel. I have never looked at one single video of the Sister Rita Club and I've been new about praying the word. That's not something new. So then if we're giving that credit to any certain person, that is wrong. Praying the word is something that has been around for many, many, many years before any YouTube, before any social media. Praying the word has been a thing. So I don't know why this seems like it's a novel approach. It is not. It is not. It is a wonderful approach. It is a beautiful approach because what can be truer than the words that have come out of God's own mouth? Saying, God, you said this in your word and here I am. Trusting in that word. That's all that praying the word is. Now, another thing about praying the word, um, especially with what I have been seeing and what I have been hearing and the stuff that I, I've been seeing said to my wife and messages that she has received on this subject. Um, another thing is, is this led by God? Is God leading you to make this video about teaching people to pray the word? Um, does the devil want you to pray? Does the devil tell you to pray? Does the devil think you should pray? Does the devil want any one of us to pray about anything? Does the devil want us to get on our knees and subject ourselves to the humility that is needed to pray to our father? No, he does not. So then if anybody is telling you to pray, genuinely telling you to pray and pray the, the, the passage of the Bible or pray this particular verse for this situation or this, that, or the third. Test the spirit to see if it is of God, a spirit that is telling you to pray and to pray the words of truth from the scripture to uh, 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 talk to God. That is not an evil spirit. That is not the spirit of Satan. That is not the spirit of this world or this culture. That is the spirit of God, ladies and gentlemen. Remember uh, uh, Philippians chapter one, where uh, Paul says, 
there are some who go out for me because they know that I love the Lord and I'm bound and I'm in jail because of this opportunity to uh, uh, share the gospel with people who hadn't heard it because they know I'm here for that reason. Some of them go out and magnify the Lord all the more. Some of them go out and teach the truth of the gospel all the more. Some of them go out and, 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 and push the word of God forth all the more. And I thank them for that. But then Paul said this, Paul said, still some others go out to, in their minds, to make my uh, 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 bondage more unbearable. They think they're hurting me by preaching the gospel because they thought that I was using this for my gain. And so they thought that they were going to take it and use it for their gain. But really all they're doing is still preaching the same gospel message and getting it out while I'm locked up in here. So while they think they're hurting me, they're not hurting me. They're actually helping me get the job done. So I've uh, wrote down a few things that I think would be wonderful for uh times and scenarios where we could pray the word of God. All right. So when you are faced with tough decisions, we can ask God for wisdom according to James 1, 5, so that you can make a honorable decision. Remember, James 1, 5 says that God gives us wisdom. If we ask him for it, he gives it without measure. He heaps wisdom on us. So then we'll have as much wisdom as we need just by asking him for it. Another occasion that you can pray for, for, for marriage problems, you can pray uh, for husbands, pray First Peter 3, 7, that God teach us how to dwell with our wives with understanding, that we may live our lives without fear that our prayers are not being heard because we haven't been treating our wives well. So that's one way uh, uh, when we're having marriage problems, we can pray for ourselves. We ain't got to pray on nobody else, but we use the word of God to pray for ourselves. For wives, you can pray First Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4, that God teaches you how to have a quiet and gentle spirit, that, that this is precious to God, so then it ought to be precious to you. Um, another way we can pray for ourselves is for single men. You can pray that God would send you a good thing. As the scripture says, he who finds a wife finds what? A good thing. So then ask God to lead you to that woman who will be your good thing and then wait on his leading. Another thing we can pray for, for single women, they can pray that God would send them a husband who loves them like Christ loves the church and gave himself up for them. So then when you pray this according to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, then you're asking God through the very use of his own word to give you what his will is for you. Then there's another one for parents. We pray for wisdom in training up our children in godliness, according to uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Lord, help me to train up my child in the way that they should go. Help me to teach them the right way. Help me to model to them the right things so that when they grow old, Prayerfully, they will not depart from it. And I always like to make sure that people understand when we speak Proverbs, when we pray the Proverbs, when we talk about Proverbs in general, we need to understand that Proverbs are exactly that. They are Proverbs, not promises. God didn't promise this. He's saying generally, this is the wisest way for you to lead your life. If you do these things, if you follow these principles, generally things will go this way. But it is not a promise that things will go this way because we see that in the Bible. David, who was a man after God's own heart, he raised up children and one of them tried to even kill him and slept with his wives. So that shows you that even when you train your children up right, sometimes they will go the right way, sometimes they will not. But you should not let that hang on you. You take that to God. He's sovereign over all these things. And finally, children can pray that God give them an obedient heart so they can live a long life according to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Remember in, in, in the Ten Commandments, he says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on the earth. So there's so many different scenarios and so many different ways and so many different things that we can pray the word of God for. And as a resource, as a resource, y'all know that my favorite pastor is... 
H.B. Charles Jr. And I think that a wonderful resource for prayer would be this book. Let me see if I can get it on your screen. There you go. It Happens After Prayer by H.B. Charles. I have sat with my family and used this book during a Bible study time. And it has been very helpful because he breaks things down practically, beautifully, praying reverently, praying honestly. All of these things are in this book. And it is a very, very, very good, down-to-earth, practical, insightful book for prayer. So get this book, order this book, H.B. Charles, It Happens After Prayer, a wonderful resource for your prayer and study. Let me know how you feel. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about praying the word. Talk to me. Give me feedback. I would appreciate it. Uh, like this video, please. Share it with your friends. God bless you. Thank you. Happy Witness Wednesday. Prayer advertises our dependence upon God. Prayer is a declaration of dependence. But I think that's the key to prayer. The key, in one sentence, the key to effective prayer is a heart of dependence. My willingness, my, my diligence, my devotion to prayer exposes who or what I truly depend on. And there are times when we will not feel like praying. There are times when prayer is hard. It is a struggle. We press through during those times as a declaration that I am trusting God in the midst of this, not something or someone.